All right, so I'm going to talk about shape to OSM. Um, well, first of all, my name's Ian. Uh, I'm from the Midwest, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I am a Java programmer, as you might notice, um, in my day job. So I have the unfortunate, that's an unfortunate consequence. Everything I write is in Java or Python. Um, so uh, Shape to OSM is a conversion tool uh, that takes in shape files and converts them to OSM. Um, that's, a, that's why I named it that way. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to show, show you guys where the, oh, see this little spike right here? That's everybody going to topOSM.com during Lars's talk. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I thought I had this up already, but I didn't. There it is. So the, the URL, if you guys would like to poke around um, while I'm talking about it, it's on good GitHub right now. Can't see my own screen. Um, uh, GitHub slash END slash shape to OSM. Um, I, I don't think that the release files are here yet, but um, I'm moving them over from where they used to be. Um, so this is, this is the place to go if you want to check out what I'm talking about. Um, there's also another tool that's written by um, Chris Schmidt called PolyShape to OSM or Shape the Number to OSM. Um, and I, that came before this and I wrote this because I couldn't figure out how to get the Python dependencies working um, and I knew how to get Java dependencies working so I wrote this in the time it would have taken me to figure out Python dependencies. Um, uh, so that's the point of this, um, that and the rules file, which I'll show you in just a minute, actually right now. Um, so the idea behind shaped OSM is that um, you specify a shape file that you want to read in. Um, you also specify a rules file that, that tells the program what to do with the attributes on the shape file and how to, how to apply them uh, to the OSM data that comes out of that shape file. Um, a, a typical rules file will look something like this. That's legible. Um, up at the top, this is the, the one that comes straight out of, um, out of Git and has a fairly good description of what, what each field is. Um, but it, it's still pretty, um, I don't know of a good word to use, pretty weird. I guess. Um, so, for example, here is um, this first line here. That I was using, uh, when I first started writing this, and it's it takes the outer part of a multi polygon, looks for an attribute called f type, and if there if the the feature has f type of stream river, it applies the natural equals river OSM tag. So um, there's also other uh, derivations of that. So if this, this one here, the second line, um, it, it looks for the attribute in the shape file called genus name, and it applies or it accepts any, um, the blank means any value for that attribute, and then applies the OSM tag name and this little dash here means to apply what whatever the value was, stick it there for that name value. And then there's other weird things like this one here is um, always apply the land use equals cemetery OSM tag. Um, and then there's an exclude functionality somewhere that isn't in this rules file, but um, you can exclude certain shapefile features based on their attribute names. So um, based on that, you get, let's see where I ended up. Let's see if I can find a good spot. Right up here in Minnesota, this haze of blue um, came from NHD 
and uh, using a rules file that's on the wiki. Um, I don't think I imported this, but somebody else did. And um, it has all the water bodies, all the flow lines, areas, and other features that um, make sense in OSM, which is most of them. Um, so that's an example of shaped OSM being used. Um, and it's that simple, and I'm done. Nope, just kidding. Um, the, um, there's other things you can do with it. For example, you can do points. Where did my mouse go? Uh-oh. Oh. I didn't know you could triple click to start JOSM. So let me show you real quick. Where's my QGIS? Here it is. So here is a, um, a chunk of NHD. This is a lake in northern Minnesota. Um, and it's toxic green because it's touching Canada. And <laughs> they put this cement wall right here to keep <laughs> the American water out. <laughs> um, and actually that, so I, I already showed you NHD, so that's not as cool, but somewhere down here, what? Uh, I found some um, address points from my hometown of Roseville in Minnesota. And so each one of these guys here, um, if I, I have them open in QGIS and I can Take a look and see which, boy, where's my select tool? There it is. Oh, well, this works too. So um, you can use any of the existing tools to see what fields already exist in the shapefile. Um, so these are the fields that the left-hand side of the, the rules file will use. So for example, I can pull open, um, That's not a good one. Huh, where'd it go? I had a address file. Um, anyway, it, it pulled out the, um, the street name and the street address number and stuck those into the OSM format and then created these points. And um, we can take a look at what that looks like in JOSM. Ta-da. Can't see that. So these are the uh, address points pulled into OSM, JOSM. Um, so after you get your uh, your data into shape, sorry, into OSM file format, um, generally the accepted practice is to find is to download the data that already exists there. Stop looking at top OSM, guys. There we go. All right. Um, so you can see that it's correctly projected. Um, this this shape file um, came from some weird local projection, and um, the shape to OSM should do the reprojection for m most um, projections. And uh, so it, you can see that it's fitting along these streets here. Um, but the problem is, it, oh. Well, last time I looked, these address points were already there. And so my point was, I shouldn't upload this data because I can see that there's two, way, two nodes here uh, at the same point with the same information. And so I just did all that conversion for nothing. But now I know that the data is already there. Um, but it turns out it's not there. So maybe I could upload these. But I'm not going to do that while everybody's watching plausible deniability. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the basic gist of shape to OSM. Um, there's other things that I can't really show you right now because they don't work. Um, but for example, there's a what I'm calling a glomifier, uh, which takes in 
uh, the shape the OSM file, and uh, this is especially useful for NHG data where um, each of the reaches in a in a flow line are separate uh, se separate line strings, and the glamifier will uh, take the duplicate nodes at the end of each line string and mash them together into one node and connect the ways if they have the same reach code. So for example, if there's one river that goes really long and it's made up of 50,000 different uh, ways, um, this will make one way, well no, it'll connect the ways. Um, it'll keep the ways um, separate, but the, the, top, the topology will be correct. Um, there's also a, a tool that I've been working on for this, what's probably a year um, that is called the Relationificator that takes uh, <laughs> boundaries and when they're, so right now if you, if you take a, a shape file with a boundary and the two uh, boundaries overlap and then come, come apart again, um, you'll get two ways that are exactly overlapping at that at that intersection, um, and the relationificator would pull those those two ways apart, create a new one, and then make a a, a multi polygon in OSM um, that shares the middle way. Um, lots of whiteboard discussion on that with myself. Um, so if anybody is interested in that kind of problem, I'd be happy to accept or to talk to you about it. Um, but that's the basic um, shape to OSM. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, not, I, I'm sure I don't fully understand the NHD um, scheme or what you want to call it, but I think in some cases the flow lines are the only thing that represent small streams and such. In other cases, there are flow lines that run down the middle of lakes that are collected and connected to such and such. Yep. Are you filtering out flow lines that are in the middle of the polygon? No. Much, or you just can't see them? Um, so, at least when I started doing these imports, uh, the accepted thing to do in that case was to, um, of course, not, was to to have a polygon in OSM that represented the riverbank, and then also have a river, a way tagged river running down the middle with a name on it. So luckily that's pretty much what NHG does, it's just a matter of converting it. Um, and then also there's these, uh, these red lines here, these are artificial ways that, that keep the topology going. Um, I'm leaving those in there as well, calling them natural or waterway artificial or something like that. Um, they're useful. I don't, I don't know for who, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's an example, right? This guy here. The blue thing is a, is a uh, river area. And then this red line here is the the artificial path that makes up the center line of that river and that gets imported with the name at least in my rules um, it's been a while since I've done a NHG import so tell us about that little feature there where the flow line goes to the disconnected part of the green line so that so there's different rules about NHD um, and how they decide which uh, which river parts to make a line and which parts to make an area, and I think that one there is um, not wide enough. It's a connector. Or it's a connector. Any other questions? I didn't think to look at the time. Should I keep talking about stuff, or do you guys want to go have lunch? I can keep talking. If you want to speak up. All right, um, I will. So the next, <laughs> so one of, the, one of the things I've been working on, so I really don't think that imports, I'm kind of on the wall about how imports should work. And so I've kind of given up on working on importing stuff. Um, I'm still working on the tool, but I don't, I'm not actively doing imports myself. 
And one of the things that's become more interesting to me is um, the, the background tiles for, um, especially the Yahoo tiles, sometimes they're not the greatest or the most recent for editing. And so um, I, I've started recently taking over the Open Aerial Map project from Chris Schmidt. And I guess that's the first time I've said that. It, I'm really just kind of doing um, what interests me which is taking the, the NAIP imagery and tiling it. Um, so if there's other people that are interested in getting that, getting their local data into tiles, and by tiles I mean 256 square images that we can stick behind OSM data so that we can more easily map, um, you should come talk to me or just send me a email with your WMS and I'll stick it into the, the list of WMSs that um, get tiled. And um, that it might make it faster eventually um, for mappers in your area to have higher quality imagery like that to map over. So anyway, that was my secondary talk. Lightning talk, number one. <laughs> and now, any, any questions again? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what coordinate system do you want the tiles in? Uh, I'm generating the tiles. So I, it, I'm, I'm probably going to query your WMS in in um, the lat long, and I'll reproject it to, what? to Google projection. Okay. Well, we got uh, some folks out at Rensi on one of their supercomputers generating um, tile caches for the whole state with our um, four band NAPE stuff. So, cool. Uh, one of the caches is going to be the Google projection, so you may not need to regenerate it all yourself. Yeah, that, so I'm using. Um, the San Diego, San Diego State University computer, which I, I got an account from them back when Haiti was happening to help out with that imagery, and I haven't used it until yesterday. So, um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing. Any other questions? Great. Thanks, guys.